Well, hey there, folks. It's Justin from CartoonSmart.com, and let's go over some basic variable types uh, with Swift 4. Uh, this video would probably be fine um, as far back as any version of Swift. Uh, the basics don't really change that much, uh, but uh, you know, it's probably about time to refresh some of these videos, the basic ones. So, uh, by the way, I'm just in a uh, in Xcode uh, using a playground file right now. So, if you go over here to uh, playground, you can just make uh, your own little blank file and end up in the same place that I'm at right now. And uh, let's begin typing these. So I'm gonna put in here var, uh, let's just say my string. This is gonna be a string type variable. And let's just say hello from cartoonsmart.com. There we go. Uh, now I can change this variable over time. I can make it equal to something completely different. Uh, this can be numbers, letters inside of here. Uh, uh, that's what it means to be kind of a string type. Uh, you'd always uh, put in here these little quotes at the beginning at the at, and end, and uh, there's really not too much more to, to strings than that. But uh, the important thing that I want to bring up here is that this this variable can change. Okay, if I put in here let, that means that it's stuck. All right, we're never going to be able to change it off of what it, it currently equals. Right, that's really no fun though. So let's make that uh, back to being a variable again. And let's come down here and let's uh, play with at least one number type. So this is going to be an integer or int for short. And let's just start this guy off at zero. Swift has all sorts of different uh, uh, number types. <laughs> and uh, as a news feed thing pops up to the side there, now you know what day it is. Uh, so, you, you know, you could make this uh, float, which would be, a, you know, it could, ha it could have a decimal value. You can see even within typing float over here, there's there's all sorts of different options, double, floating point. In fact, I would say there's way too many number options, right? CG float is another type. If you're going to be moving things around in Sprite Kit, a lot of times you'll have to use uh, that value. And, and and most of these can convert easily from one to another. So for example, you could put something like um, you know, CG float over here. And, and let's say that this was another variable, you know, another far, right? that was a number you could you could convert that to cg float by doing that right so but uh you know let's just uh let's just stick with an integer for right now and i'll just put zero in there and then another common type is going to be a bool value which is just going to be it's going to look like this and it's either going to be true or it's going to be false okay so it's kind of the light switch variable it, it's only ever going to have these two values over here and uh, a lot of times you just use it for you know I mean, to describe what you use a bool variable for actually is crazy. But, you know, do things at certain times, don't do things at certain times, right? That's, you know, that's kind, of what, kind of what it's all about. Uh, so let's look at a quick uh, for statement over here. So I'm going to say for i in zero, and this will make a little bit more sense in a second. Uh, as, long as, uh, as long as i is under 10, okay? We're gonna do what is inside of these opening and closing brackets over here. So basically, I'm just establishing that there's this variable i, okay? It's gonna begin at zero, and as long as it's under 10, we're gonna iterate through here 10 times. So starting with zero, right? And um, so the, the final time, you know, this will ultimately end up at, at, at being nine, right? So if we were to just put in here print, uh, I let's see what uh, let's see what comes out over here. So it says uh, ten times, and we can actually click on this and see what uh, basically what it, what it equals on the last time. But it's but it's reminding us, hey, it actually went through this ten times. And uh, well, I don't know how that. There we go. Let's take that off. <laughs> don't actually need to see that. Uh, so let's do something a little bit more fun than just printing out the value of it. Uh, let's take some int and we'll uh, tie this into the value. Well, there's two ways we could do that. We could just say some int equals i, right? Uh, we could also go through here and uh, make it plus one. Okay, so there's things like that you could do. Um, maybe maybe you don't want to add to some int if i is uh, under five, right? So let's go do a little if statement here. Let's say if i is under five, okay, uh, then or actually, let's see if it's over five, right? Then we'll start adding to some int. Uh, so by the end of this, let's print out what some int equals. And of course, this is just a lot of pointless programming right now. We're not really doing anything with all this, but you, but here it goes. It says it's showing four over here, right? So that makes sense. You know, if i equals six, right? Then 
that's going to equal one by equals seven. That's going to equal two and so on up to the point where it eventually ends up at uh, four. So let's, uh, let's get rid of that. And let's play around with our string a little bit. So we'll say my string is going to equal my string plus, uh, now we're actually going to convert I so number value to a string. So all we have to do for this is we would just put string and then in opening and closing parentheses, we'll insert I in there. And uh, you know what this would look like if we just left it at that uh, would eventually be one, two, three, four, you know, going on upwards like that, okay? Uh, because every time we run through there, we take the current value of my string. So after the first time it runs through, it's gonna, actually this will start at zero. Uh, after the first time it runs through, you know, that's what our string would look like. Then after the next time, one, two, and so on like that. If we wanted to pretty it up a little bit, what we could do is put a little space in here. Okay, so plus a space. Let me go ahead and just get rid of that. Uh, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and see what this looks like now. So after our for statement has run through 10 times, let's print out what my string equals. And you can see it down here at the bottom. Hello from cartoon. Well, it went away for a sec. There it goes. Uh, hello from cartoonsmart.com. Uh, com zero. Maybe that's maybe that's where things are headed one day. Uh, so we, I should probably put in here space right there. Uh, but uh, yeah, there you have it. So let's do another little thing over here. Let's put in one more if statement. We got rid of our other one. So let's say if some int is Oh, how about uh, equal? Now, you know what? Let's make it greater than nine, okay? So we'll tie in some int uh, over here. So we'll say some int is gonna equal some int plus one. And then let's put two if statements in here. So normally what we would do is we'd say, we put in here a, a, an opening bracket and a closing bracket, squiggly bracket, and then do something inside of here. But here's a little neat thing you could try. You could actually put in, um, basically combine two if statements together. So you could say if sum int is greater than nine and sum int is less than 11, now let's actually go in here and add one more in. So we're gonna say um, in my string, equals, we gotta do two equal signs right there. Uh, it's giving us a little error here, but let's hold on one second. Let's see. What I wanna do is I wanna just copy this. So if my string equals uh, that, okay, then we get to do what is inside of here. Now, if any one of these things failed, uh, this is not gonna run. So, and I think it's actually gonna fail initially. Print, um, let's put it here true else print not true <laughs> or no true okay so like i said i think this is going to show up not true because uh at the end of all this summit actually equals nine it's not greater than nine okay so we'd actually have to start that off at one and uh, let's see what do we you know what why don't we just print out what uh what some int equals at the end of this, and then, and then we can adjust. Oh, so it equals 11. How did that happen? All right, well, why was that not true before then? Uh, let's see. Okay, so it equals 10. <laughs> I, I bet you this is the thing that is wrong. Let's, uh, let's do this. Let me get rid of that one. Okay, so now we know that our, our our failing there was with our third thing. So I maybe I didn't. Uh, let's see. Let's put it back in there. And my string equals. So what went wrong here? Oh, you know what? Check this out. The devil is in the details. Uh, so at the end, the last time this fired, remember it added one more, you know, space at the end. So it was it was hard to see that obviously when I printed it out. But yeah, actually you can kind of select it over here and tell. So uh, so there you go. Uh, you Got to pay attention to stuff like that. But uh, yeah, otherwise yeah, we we got it over here. So it is printing out true. You know, the sum in is between nine and 11. Now you, you could also do this. You could put in here an equal sign and equal sign. So if, um, if sum int was, and did I, 
Oh yeah, I think I there we go. So um, so so basically, the range here for Summit could be anywhere from nine to eleven. Why am I having trouble with the? What did I mess up over here? It still doesn't look right. But here you go. An exper I've been programming for how many years now? <laughs> like, like coming on fifteen twenty or something, and uh, and uh, and still can't remember exactly the order of those uh, <laughs> greater than less than so. So uh, so actually, the real point of this tutorial is that coding is not about memorizing. It's just about clumsily hacking away at it and occasionally remembering code that you've written before and exactly what file that <laughs> code is in to just copy and paste it from. Okay, that's going to end lesson one of our uh, refresher course. And there's beeping for no reason. Great.